Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates, and today I'm going to be going over a template that we have here in the Rental Property Management section at Time Saving Templates. If you have rental properties and you want to have an easy way to track your rental income and expenses and at the same time be able to print or send or email a rental receipt to the tenant or tenants, this template includes an upgrade to add the rental receipt process and make it a little bit easier for you. So let me jump into the template. So this is actually a variation of the landlord template which tracks rental income and expenses and summarizes everything. And the main difference is that you will now have just a quick snapshot of how this works. You'll see different tabs and pages at the bottom. We have rental property one, two, three, and for each rental property, you will have a one page to enter your rental income details as well as your expense expenses per property with different expense categories. And so you can use this to enter the income you receive, the expenses, and it will summarize a monthly summary as well as an expenses summary. And the gray cells are formulas that will update. And then there's also a main summary page that's going to list out each property. We have different versions starting with a five property version. So you'll be able to, to see all properties together and the annual totals. But I have another video that goes more in detail how to use like the basic version of this template, which doesn't include the rental receipts, but I wanted to do this version to go over how to use this rent receipt. You'll see that each property has two tabs. So each property will have a rental receipt tab that is linked to your, your page as you're entering the, the details. So let me just do a couple of examples. Say that you receive the rental income. You would just, there's several columns here. The only columns you have to really enter are going to be date paid if you want that allocated to, to a particular month. So I'll just put 3-1 and rent paid 700. And then the rest of the columns, you don't actually have to put something in, but it's there if you want. That's enough to populate the rental income for March in our summary tab. And then if you are wanting to track this remaining balance, you also have to enter how much you're charging for rent so that it can calculate any balance due. So if I were, say I was charging a thousand a month and they paid 700, then it would calculate that we still have our remaining balance and that's going to carry over every month until it's paid. For this example, I'm just going to put it at 700 so we have no remaining balance. Keep it simple. And so now we want to go and print or email the rent receipt. So we're going to click here. So you would enter this information up here, your name, your contact information, and then for the receipt part, we're just going to enter the date paid. So we have March 1st for this one. So I'm just going to do March 1st and it's pulling in that $700. Now, if I, let's see, customer name, if I were to track the customer names, then it'll pull that information over too. There's a place for notes here. Really, that's all you have to do. It's going to print a receipt or save the receipt based on the date you have here. So if you have multiple dates, you could put in, you would just add the date again. Well, obviously you don't want to add March 1st twice. So a couple things to note, if there's multiple payments on one day, you're going to want them in one row because it's not, it's just going to pick up the first occurrence on March 1st. So if there's another check you want to include, put on another date, you could do that. So if March 2nd, then they pay a $50 late fee or something like that, you can, it, that part will work to update the amount paid. But if it's all within one day, you want it to be on one row. So 
say that we have it ready to go, this is the receipt, we want to go ahead and send it to the customer. A couple ways you can do this. So you could either just print this straight out, it's set for one page and just print. Or if you want to email this, I would recommend saving as a PDF, that way you're not emailing them all this other, this Excel file with all these tabs. And with a PDF, they can't really change anything. If you send this as an Excel, I mean, they could come in and edit this, but PDF seems to be the better option in most cases. So to save as a PDF, I would, so first I would save your Excel file first, just so you have it as a backup. So we save the Excel version, we have that, and then now we want to save this page as a PDF. So we're gonna do file, save as, and go to browse, and we're gonna save, find a place where you want to save the receipts to, maybe a receipt folder, and then save as type, you're gonna click in this box and change it to PDF. And then you also want probably wanna change the file name. So rental one, March, receipt, or you could put your customer's name and then click save. So that's going to open up a PDF here and it just saved that one page as PDF. So now that is ready to send. So that is how you can save a PDF of just the rent receipt page. But be sure you save the Excel file before you do that because well, the Excel file is still here. You want it saved in both Excel and PDF. So that is how I would do it for saving as a PDF. If for some reason you don't want to save as a PDF and you just want a copy of the Excel, you can also right click this rent receipt tab, click on move or copy and click create a copy and then select new book and OK. That way it you want create a copy so the original stays in your main file. And then when you create a new book, it's just going to pull over that rent receipt one and it's going to pull it over to Excel. Now, if I click in here, it's still linking to the, this formula is still in here, linking to the file. So that's why when you save it as a PDF, all the formulas are removed and you don't have to worry about anything changing if for some reason you delete something in the main file, but that's just another way you could do it. So back to the main template, that is how you would print out your rental receipts. There's a lot more features in here that I really didn't have a chance to go over, such as entering the expense categories, but it really works very much the same as the income. You would just enter an expense category, enter a date, we'll stick with March, and then enter an amount. And then there's other columns if you want to add more detail, but that's going to then total as an expense in your monthly summary and in your expense category summary, as well as the main annual summary page. So I'll link to the original landlord video, as well as this is a separate listing, the one that has the rental receipts. So if you're interested in finding this one, this rental receipt template, I'll link to it, but also you can go to timesavingtemplates.com and then go to the shop and then property management. That's where you're gonna find all the rental property management templates that we have, as well as a couple videos helping and a quiz that will help you decide which rental template to get. And if you scroll, this is the rental receipt template right here in the middle section. So feel free to check that out. And then we also have some free resources. If you go to timesavingtemplates.com slash free resources, there's gonna be a rental property management section and that will have a free property improvement tracker template that can help you keep track of things. Um, so feel free to check that out. We also have a free guide to getting started with Excel. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And until next time, don't forget I'm here to help you streamline and save time with your Excel spreadsheets, whether you're using Excel to manage your rental properties 
Or we also have small business templates as well as HR and compensation related templates, which is my corporate background. So thank you again, and I will see you next time.